there we go. Now, our guests who have, uh, I don't even know how to phrase, were forced on, gladly came on. It depends who we're talking to. We have the crazy couple of celluloid, Katha and Don Cato. Hey, guys. 24 carats. Hey. <laughs> Only two you get cheap. <laughs> so Walk what are your dice tonight? What are you drinking or otherwise uh, doing? Uh, uh, Italian uh, bubbly Whatever it is, delightfully tasting white stuff. And I'm, <laughs> I'm drinking uh, tea with a heavy oh, amount of ginger and lemon. Ah. Now, when you guys, when we were doing the check check earlier, you were a bit closer to the mic, and now you're a bit further away. Is there any way we could have you move a little closer? Thank sure. you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> we'll move now a little we closer, closer to us. Either way. Oh, 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 oh gosh. Okay. For those of you that knew, I'm Travis Sivart. I'm the host, and tonight I am having a Bloody Mary with a little too much hot sauce in it in my plus 10 charisma gaming pint wow. glass. All right. So we got that going, and I, I will be smoking, but I totally forgot to grab something, so there's no cigars or pipes here. Right? Factor to smoke with. Hmm? You do have something back there to smoke I with. I do. Please do, Pipes. We need an opening toast. We do need an That's opening toast. Opening toast. Uh, here's to the creativity that we uh, have forever, thanks to filmmakers. Hey! Here, here, here. Hello. So, for all our hot bodies that are watching, what are you guys drinking, smoking, or whatever you're partaking of tonight? Let us know. And uh, hello to Skipper and Lady Skipper, who has joined us already. And I think that's all we have Hi at the moment. The rest are strolling in. But anyhow. I can't see the chat. It's too far away. It's still too. I made it big. I rubbed it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. uh -oh. So anyhow, um, shall we just get right in with educating ourselves about film festivals? Let's Absolutely. do it. Let's, yes, let's do it. Okay, I have a really basic, uh, what I like to call an idiot question, though. You know, it's it's acceptable that there's very few stupid questions. I'll not say none. So what is a film festival about? Why would somebody want to go to one? Go to work. They're going to cut me. They got scissors. Uh, the reason uh, someone would want to go to a film festival is to see uh, films that you may be not able to see anywhere else. Uh, smaller films, very personal films, uh, films from all over the world, um, different kinds of films. I think independent films are very personal because they're not a big, huge budget. So people are really honing down into what they know. And so I think that they resonate. And I think that... Um, People enjoy that. It's a very, it's a different experience than going to see like a big Hollywood studio film, which is fine. Nothing right. wrong with that. Um, but a, a smaller film or a, a series of short films from Bulgaria and then Croatia and then West Africa and then Corona and then Virginia Croatia. with all of the films maybe dealing with the same things is very interesting. And I think it brings the brings us together. Well, also, uh, we can, uh, to build on that, it's uh, an event where you can see that someone from Africa has the same kind of personal issues that they do from anywhere else. In other words, we're all human beings. It just so happens to be we're from different places. And at a film festival, too, you'll, you'll meet the filmmakers. Um, yes. oh, that's always nice. Oh, yeah. So let me let me ask you, what's it like? See, I've done conventions, I've done all kinds of stuff. Okay, hold on. Or you want to go before me? I go, go ahead. Go. I want to know where are they typically held? Because when I think of a film festival, what pops in my head is like Woodstock. So is it in a field at night? Well. <laughs> I, oh, here you go. <laughs> I forgot to do, I forgot to do something. Go. Well, in our in our particular case, uh, we screened at the Museum of the Moving Image uh, in Astoria, which is the home of motion pictures here in the United States. Uh, initially, back in the twenties, um, and we also screened at Kaufman Astoria Studios, which is the largest sound stage on the East Coast. Now, typically, most film festivals. Um, Screen anywhere from normal everyday theaters in your neighborhood to retrofitting schools, churches, 
uh, gymnasiums or whatever they have available in the community. So Woodstock, as you mentioned, as a film festival, they tend to screen in several uh, screens in and around Woodstock, New York. It's a, it's a festival that's been around for quite a while. Other film festivals, uh, for example, in Boulder, Colorado, um, what they do there is that they have a series of, uh, they have tents, churches, mm -hmm. schools, and you have to take a bus and a shuttle, which takes you around to all of the venues. So it depends. If you come to Tribeca here in New York, then it's about uh, 12 or 13 theaters in lower Manhattan. Oh, nice. the same as Toronto, it's probably 10 theaters in and around, uh, you know, downtown Toronto. Sundance, not only do they screen in Park City, but they screen in Provo, they screen in Salt Lake City, you know, and that's 45, 50 miles apart. Oh. So it can be anything to putting up a screen in the middle of nowhere. Now, are there other things going on during the film festival? Are there panels? Are there you mentioned Meet the Directors and the Creators of the Films? So, well, so we're how's that for eighth year, and it's been a micro budget. So our focus has always been the films, the films, the films. So we have done panels in the past, and because filmmakers like to go out on Friday nights and sometimes can't get up at 10 o'clock on a Saturday um, or, a Sunday. or a Sunday or any day, uh, Elizabeth. And uh, by the way, Elizabeth's film has screened with us in the big, beautiful Redstone Theater at the Museum of the Moving Image. Uh, and it's, it's quite an honor to, you know, there's thousands and thousands of people in the entertainment business that you've never met, and they are contributing to the cultural fabric of our of our country. So, and that's Elizabeth, that's you, that's a lot of people. So, to be able to get those kinds of filmmakers into that museum is really an astonishing accomplishment, really. And we're really that's one of the things we're really excited about the festival is matching filmmakers up with this incredible facility. Now, if I can interrupt real quick. Ian, Skipper, Lady Skipper, Mo, thanks for following. Drops him. Thanks for uh, joining us again today. If you guys have any questions for these guys, these are the folks who run the Queen's World Film Festival. I got that right, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Feel free to ask them any question you like. And if you're from anywhere that's not the U.S., or else even if you want to mention your city and state in the U.S., Part of their film festival is all, it's being inclusive, it's the diversity, etc. So feel free to mention things that resonate with you in that aspect. And ask them any question you want, from basic to complicated. If you mention where, what state you're at, or where you're country. from, country, state, whatever, they'll let you know if there's a film in their festival, festival from there. Or, yeah. So far that we've location. served uh, 81 countries, 81 nations have contributed films over the last eight years. That's awesome. That's and awesome. Virginia. And Virginia. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I feel All like right. we have another film from Virginia, don't we? I feel like there was somebody. Yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the you can't get rid of the Virginians. We've had seven <laughs> presidents. You can't get rid of us. <laughs> All right. So what makes your festival, what makes the Queen's World Film Festival so special? Well, I think what makes it really super special is Dawn's curation, because at a lot of festivals you'll have, the, it's a stacked schedule, they just start screening one right after the other, and Dawn curates the entire festival thematically in two-hour blocks, so he starts to group all these different kinds of films from all over the world together, and then we find kind of a, an evocative name, and then we assign a host, so each, one, each block has its own screening event. And we like to say that we don't do red carpet, we do full houses, because red carpets sell clothes. <laughs> they don't really sell the films, and at our festival, the films are the stars. It's true. And if I may, uh, I've seen, I've participated in the festival and experienced the festival from many different angles, and I have yet to find a festival, a film festival, anywhere else in the world where the respect and the admiration and absolute joy of film is celebrated. And it's an extraordinary experience. And I highly encourage anyone, anyone who's got any time to come out and see this fest. It's a tremendous experience. Thank you. Yeah. My goodness, thank you. A few comments from the crowd. Sorry to interrupt. 
Ian says he used to attend local film fests. He's in Pennsylvania, by the way. Original indie types in Golden Age films. Sometimes there'd be a French or German film. And then Lady Skipper out of North Carolina says she's worked in many film festivals at Carolina Theater in Durham. Oh, yeah. yeah, very nicely done. And uh, Ian is also talking about his local defunct film theaters have been restored and mostly used for film fest. Plus, drive-in theaters provide for more than just first-run films. Oh, oh, a drive-in theater. Oh. <laughs> We're going next weekend. We have a great one down here. It's, it's wonderful. But what question did you have? Oh, I have... This is what I wondered, because we always say, won an award at a film festival. Who votes on them? How do they get voted on? What's the process? Don uh, and his screening committee this year was Crystal McIntosh and Jason Stefaniak, but uh, Jason uh, had to leave and go do something else. So they watched all 611 films. They were all scored. They were all rated, and they all had notes. Um, and then he curated out of that, and then they went with their guts to do some nominations, and then after they had done the gut, they then compared it to the numbers. They, then he went back and just really tried to see where they were with the numbers. And, and in most categories, there's about nine in the shorts and things like that, which is comparable to the Academy Awards. And then there are selected experts in different fields that Don's brought in to uh, judge certain categories. But then some of the categories are decided by Don and we're unapologetic. It's our festival. And, um, yeah, you know, there's 10,000 festivals that you can, you can go to. So we're honored when you, when you submit to us and this is the package that you're submitting and we think you get a good bang for your buck. So, and if he says your film is good, then that's good enough for me. So wait, let's, let's just, I'd like to reiterate if I could go back to my previous statement, how many films have you watched this year, Don? I probably watched, I personally watched about 500 Five hundred. Wow. Five hundred. So you must films. be like a popcorn hater by now. <laughs> well, I wish I. Well, most of you, you can't do anything else while you're watching these movies because you can't. It's hard to. You can't eat. You can't. You have to focus on them because, um, right. you know, you. Uh, the, the enjoyment comes after you've made the decision to have it in the festival, and uh, and it, I what one of the great thrills I have is after I have a selective film to go see it on a big screen. Mm. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's really nice. I never get to see all of them, but when I, I like to pop into a screening, I go, I see it on a big screen, and I go, oh, it's gorgeous. There it and is. you know that filmmaker who's been working on a monitor this size, you know, and just working, and they've just given everything to get this piece of art out in the world, and they sent it to us, and, you know, we have to make tough decisions, but the, but the 189 this year... You just know that there's 180, we're 10 days away right now. So there's 189 people that are just like, they're just, you know, they're hoping with everything yep. that people love it. And, and it's, it's a great way to experience the world at, at our age. It's a great way to experience people from all over the world. And see, and see what their culture and their social situation. I have a few more comments from our viewers tonight as well as a question. First, I want to say thank you to Syrinx. Glad to see you here, buddy. It was great seeing you last weekend. Thanks for following and joining us tonight. Skipper says, I used to work at Double Take Documentary Film Festival, oh. Nevermore Film Festival, Horror and Gothic, Retro Phantasma Film Festival, and North Carolina Gay and Lesbian Film Festival, and several others. Oh, wow. Then Mo has a question for you. Mo asks, I'm brand new to all of this. What sort of categories slash groupings might we see at your festival or other festivals? <laughs> yeah, I know. You just mentioned a lot. So. <laughs> well, we, uh, we have it's narrative shorts, narrative features, documentaries, LGBT, animation, uh, experimental. And then if you want to submit it and you don't know what your category is, we'll find one for you. <laughs> So, so all genres are welcome. And, and everything is welcome. But then in the th themes, yes, it's sir. it's what's presented to them. We have um, a question there. You, yes, you. <laughs> Young lady in the back. Um, how does someone go and watch the films at a festival? Do they buy tickets? Do they sign up? Oh, yeah. Well, how do they do this with yours? Uh, 
they go to the queensworldfilmfestival.com. Oh, my God, God in heaven. I have, oh, my You God. are separated from birth. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> really? I almost had him convinced that that was not an acceptable practice. <laughs> We're at the tavern. Don't put it away. Don't put it away. We got to do a mutual. We got to do Post a link to the film. <laughs> oh, there you go. Do you want to see what mine says on it? I'm yes, not please. Sure. He's got to write something. It. Hold on. <laughs> what do I do with my Sharpie? There's Sharpies in the cup. I pulled one out that's got the fat tip. Oh, well, mine says nothing for now. Give it a minute. That's funny. Uh, yeah, so you go to Festival dot com. You mm -hmm. can sort the films by genre. You can sort them by country. You can sort them by day. You can sort them by block. Um, and then when you click on the the name of the film, it'll take you to a place where you hit buy tickets. And just remember, oh. you're buying you're buying a block. So the block may have a different name than the name of the film that you got interested in. So some people kind of go, ah, it's not the same. Well, it's that's the block name. Um, or you can come down and hang out and um, walk around and pop into screenings, buy tickets. Um, we're going to have an app, and I think we went live today, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do with an app yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's off. <laughs> so is there, like, if you wanted to wander in and out willy-nilly, is there, like, a group ticket you can get, or is it all individual? Okay. It's a group ticket. We have, it's willy-nilly. And willy and nilly are both, will both be there. They're, they're little scamps, that willy and nilly. <laughs> they are. They're oh. very silly. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, because we met several filmmakers of indie films at a convention we went to. Uh, Mysticon in Roanoke, Virginia. How would one submit a film to your festival next year? Or question. Um, if you go to withoutabox.com or filmfreeway.com, those are two platforms that really will take care of you and help you enter festivals. Um, I would say to every filmmaker, you must do your homework. Don't just stand back from the barn and try to blast it and hope you hit something. You know, do your research and find out the festival that maybe has the niche of films that you're looking for or, or a time of year that pertains to you. Everybody wants to get in Tribeca and South by Southwest and um, Toronto and Sundance. You know, okay, they're expensive to get into. And when you get to a certain level, you have a shot at it. If you don't have a star in your film, and you don't know anybody, but it's a brilliant film. You need to get your foothold in other regional festivals and start to spread that word of mouth and use that film as your resume for your next big jump. Gotcha. Um, Just remember, when you submit to uh, Sundance, uh, they get about 14,000 submissions. Mm. Wow. So uh, you have to just stop and think a minute, what are my chances? Uh, and is it realistic? It's always worth submitting. It's sure. whatever, yeah, I mean, absolutely. You you never mm -hmm. know, but just there's not enough people in the state of Utah to watch fourteen thousand films. <laughs> <laughs> so you there's know, a fee to enter to apply. Yeah, there's a submission fee, and we we there are festivals who who charge a submission, and um, they don't get serious submitters. I got it, yeah. Right, but our fees are low, and we keep them low. Um, and one year, um, we even reduced them in, in mid-season just because the economy was, was having a tough time. But it, it does, we have to be compensated for the time of, of screening 611 films. Because unless yeah. you just want him to be playing it while he's going out the door to earn some money, you, know, you, 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 need to be, you need to look at it. We need to have that. When you say low fees, what is that range? I think we start at twenty five. I, mean, I think we start at twenty five, and they make you raise it. Uh, they make you have these different deadlines on without a box, and you have to raise it by something. I think that we went from twenty five to forty five at, at the dollars. end. Yeah, 
That's not bad. That's, dollars. That, no. that's cheaper than submitting a college application. That's true. Ooh, that's a good <laughs> point. That's a good point. That's really okay. We're so, people who come to your festival, what experience or what do you want them to take away with them after they leave? Well, you know, the marketing and promoting uh, answer would be we would like them to experience and be, be you know, have an experience with the films and love them and become an indie lover and come back. I don't really care if you love the films. Uh, it, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes art can irritate you and can upset you and can rub your nose. Creates an emotion. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that friction, uh, it, we've become intolerant to that friction. We've become intolerant to not liking you. If, if you do something I don't like, I, I cannot stand that, and I may have to kill you. So, it's like family. <laughs> exactly. It's like yeah. Thanksgiving. So I enjoy a screening when there's a lot of different um, attitudes and beliefs and types in the room and that there's a lively conversation and that they go around the corner and have a bowl of soup and a, and a glass of wine and continue to argue. Yeah. I call it yeah. It is yeah, art. Yeah. Well, art. Well, art, you know, art is meant to provoke. Right. right. No, I meant the bowl of soup and a glass of wine together. <laughs> well, maybe, I don't know. I'll tell you what, though, from all the films I've seen, I've seen quite a few films at the Queen's Old Film Festival, uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, yes, they may disturb you, yes, they may, you know, you may enlighten you or thrill you or emotionally scar you, but all of them are amazingly beautiful and of tremendous quality, so, and that's... Elizabeth was a, projector, a projectionist for a while also <laughs> with us. And has a T-shirt uh, saying "I survived," and I won't say the name of the film. I'll do it. Well, let's not let's not do that to the poor I, filmmaker because well, it's a beautiful. <laughs> it is a beautiful shirt, and the director asked me about that shirt and was so excited, and he's begged me to get him a shirt. So that we have to because you know what? We're opening the festival with his new experimental film, and it's Bring it out, like John. that. It's nothing like this last yeah, one. Yeah. What yeah. is an experimental film? How is a film experimental? Well, you know, it is a misnomer. They're all experiments. You, know, right. you, you hope it, it turns out okay. But something that maybe is non-linear, maybe okay. something that is uh, uh, more experiential, uh, maybe something that... Well, yeah, if you would Cloud Atlas be considered experimental? Cloud Atlas? Okay, so you haven't seen that one. It was a Tom Hanks film, and it was definitely non-linear linear and more experience-based. Oh, what do we got here? Ah, death drive. <laughs> there you go. That's a nice shirt. And we do have a question or a comment here on the. Oh. Uh, let's see here. The first one's funny. Uh, Skipper, in reference to what should you uh, go away with, take away from the film festival, Skipper says, I had one guy try to take away my theater seats. Um, <laughs> added, ah, that's funny. <laughs> Skipper, congratulations and my condolences for uh, being involved with film festivals. Yeah. <laughs> he's done a lot in his time. I tell you, he's a sound guy also. And oh, sound oh, is yeah. sound yeah. one of the most important things with independent films. Uh, yeah. Most independent films, the sound uh, <laughs> needs a little help. Needs a little help. I got a question, too. Ian uh, had a comment if, about Elizabeth. Uh, go ahead. Ian says, we used to do something like a film fest on Welcome to Steampunk with weekly uploads of steampunk genre or genre-like films. Found some really weird films in the search. I bet. Okay, thank okay. you. Oh, all right. Um, so how can, you know, people are interested in film, maybe they want to support the fest. How can they get involved or help out? Oh. There's a couple of different ways. You can contact us through the uh, festival at info at queensvillefilmfestival.com and you know we can point you in the right direction to volunteer, host uh, uh, one of the screenings, um, come down and help us with outreach, all the way up to you can make a donation on the website. You can hit that red button and uh, you can hit donate and um, those keep the other programs going. We do the youth program, which Elizabeth works in, where we go into schools and we do films with kids. And then we also have the free Encore screening series where we go into parks and community centers and churches and rooftops and all sorts of places and play films for free. 
Don't you have a sponsor for the Young Filmmakers this year? Yes, we do. The New York Community Bank this year came in to help us this year. Why, thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Absolutely, Mrs. Cato. <laughs> and the Encore screenings are uh, sponsored by uh, uh, Council Member Jimmy Van Bremer. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Hey, yeah. Ah, and you said you did. You could get group tickets or mass tickets. Yes. Or you just can go to anything. So they're fifteen. So if you want ten, we can. Uh, those on the website on uh, brown paper tickets that you go through our website are a hundred dollars. So that's a fifty dollars savings. Um, and and QWFF eight is the friends and family code that everybody can use. There you oh, go. Let's write that down. We won't tell anybody. Yeah, we won't tell anybody that didn't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> so we have we have questions for you. Oh. Uh -huh. If you could uh, do a movie of your life, what would the name of it be? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, that's a good show. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. You guys know each other, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just waiting. I'm not going to oh, tell you. Oh, of our what. life? Or your life? Yeah, yeah, the two of you. Shall we start with Ed? Ed, what would you call the movie of your life? That Why guy it? again. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Elizabeth? Oh, oh no. Oh, um. Um. Uh, uh, it, can I change my order, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrea? I, I don't know, but there'll be cats. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's, that's cats. There'll be cats. <laughs> like, like the Broadway show cats or like, oh, like no. actual cats? We have eight cats. There will be cats. There will be cats. There will be. And I guess for me is it didn't exist, so I made it happen. Ooh. Like this show. Yeah, it's kind of the story of my life, how the show, how the books that I've published, how even as a teen activities, it didn't exist, so I made it happen. That's great. Who set that example, or was that just something that was in you? Uh, it must have been in me because my family and surrounding support system was the polar opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Skipper mm -hmm. says his would be... Strange. It would be titled Strange. Strange. <laughs> <laughs> that works well. Okay. I've had enough for now. <laughs> I would, to I be would continued. Have, I would have one called The Pressing Season. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. You're so I, smart. I, I, I was on a, a, a small farm. Season. We raised, uh, among other things, grapes. Okay. Mine would be called The End of Julia Road. Yeah. Because I lived at the end of Julia Road when I was growing up. The road uh, ended, and then, and then you had to go a little bit further till you got to my house. It mm. could also be a murder mystery about Miss Rhodes and how she died. The End of Julia I Road. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we that's nothing a idea, all. too. You don't know who's watching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's only loosely based on reality would be her title. Oh, that's great. What is it? Dorothalia says, only loosely based on reality. Ah. Uh, and Lady Skipper says, stranger together. Uh, you have a cat uh, right out of your head. I oh. do. Oh, he's got a knife. <laughs> yeah, with an arm, we have three or four. I think that that's the name of your movie: is there will be cats. Will be cats. There will be cats. Yeah. Okay, works for me. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> I'll do all the costumes for it. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, there's one. All right. So, what are you looking for for this uh, fest? What is the what? Is there a film or a moment that you're looking forward to this year? For me, there is. Is it for you? Besides the end. <laughs> several. several. I think there are several. One is, for me, is the Kids Corner, um, um, where we're screening 13 films by kids. Oh, nice. nice. In the big room, in the big, big, beautiful Redstone, world-famous theater. Um, and... 
I know that all of these parents have no idea that their kids want to be artists. And I think it's, it, you know, it could be life changing for some of these fifth graders and sixth graders and seventh graders. But I also want to let the parents know that if your kid wants to be an artist, it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe might, not be, but not profitable okay. but it'll be okay yeah. well it might be profitable i mean some hit it you know yeah. but yeah. there are thousands of us out here who have put our kids through college and done everything we're supposed to do uh it lived in the arts the, our whole life and and had cats and there will be cats <laughs> there were cats then the sequel is there were cats there were cats Yes. And then and the dogs came. Then the bad part, uh, the third part, which is always horrible, will be called Chinese takeout. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Don? What are you looking forward to? Well, there's there are several films. Uh, I can't give away any names, but there were some films that we nominated, uh, and when our um, our final judge came back with uh, her scores, I was delighted that she was in the same ballpark I was. And I think that's really great because it's a, a we really looked at cinema. Um, very, just great cinema. And I think that's wonderful. I, and I can't wait to meet some of these people who made these films. Uh, <clears throat> and as a result, well, not so much as a result, but we have uh, filmmakers who've committed to be here from Vietnam, Australia, Australia, Argentina, Australia, Argentina, Italy, Italy, um, and um, that's wonderful just to see these people here. That's what I'm looking forward to is to see these people. I am too, yeah. And so, and a couple of them have been one particular filmmaker. He's won here before, and he keeps surprising us every time. Is he premiering here? Uh, I think it Raphael, is. I am Raphael, I am. Those Argentinians, they're pretty good. They are very good. And we, well, we had a Mexican who won a, an Oscar last night. Yeah, you sure did. Yes, he wow. did. If I may interrupt real quick. Now, I know you guys are on a limited schedule. How much longer can we expect to enjoy your company? Well, you can kick us off anytime. Oh, oh we'll, no. We'll oh, we won't kick you off. No, no. <laughs> uh, it's an East Coast premiere. Uh, no, we're good. Unless okay. you have something else to do. Well, we do, but at 9 o'clock we do a part called This Week in History where we discuss historic and current events. So I just didn't want to surprise you with that since we didn't necessarily fill you in on the other parts of the show. So, and I also want to say hello to a few more people who joined us. Talking Tally, yeah. great to have you here. Tally. Hope you're feeling better this week. <clears throat> Kevin, who is one of our oh, one of our co-hosts. The Brit. The Brit. Yeah, he had tech issues, so he's... Just chatting. He's hanging out, but not on the show. We have several great films from uh, Great Britain this year. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Synced up. Nice. <laughs> We're like the boy band. In <laughs> sync. Got it. Yeah. Um, and Skipper does want us to let you know that if you need dinosaurs, he can arrange it. He does a lot of work with dinosaurs. He has dinosaurs. Wow. That's incredible. He even has, what is it, um, a therapeutic dinosaur that has a vest. <laughs> it's great. That's cool. A therapeutic dinosaur with a vest. They know that dinosaurs are extinct, yes? <laughs> I don't know. Not as soon as you thought. Not as from Great Britain. Okay. <laughs> well, he's not from Great Britain. He's from North Carolina, so now you understand. Oh. oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get the back scratch out. <laughs> Still haven't my shirt. I think the cats took it. They did. I don't know. Yeah, I do that, too. Part my hair with it. Oh, that's I good. have to go get more tea. She looks empty <laughs> too. Well, I'm gonna go get some more tea. I do have to send out press credentials this evening, so I am going to bid adieu. Oh, Is, do you have any final thoughts before about the festival? Yes, or anything? or anything that we didn't cover that you would like to talk about. I do have a question. What's the the painting with the guy with his back to us? That's really cool. He's at a bar. Yeah, it's just above the Talk of the Tavern sign, and you've probably cool. seen it. It's a set, but yes, he's in front of a 1930s-type bar in his fedora with his... Nice. Very cool. 
And the other half is over here. It's a woman at the other end of the bar. In a slinky ah. dress. Back to you also. And Hold it a martini. You've probably seen this set at one of the many common places in the mall where you see all the paintings. It's, but it What's went well mall? with the theme. A mall yes. is a... Uh, it's a malt without the tea at the end. It's Spanish for bad. It's where it's go to die. People right. in jogging suits walk. That's true. Okay. Do they have dinosaurs there and vests? Service yes. dinosaurs. We are corrected Sur- by the way. Service Sur- dinosaurs. I knew a that. Can you get a service dinosaur on a plane? <laughs> well, if you order ahead of time, I'm sure. I was thinking, oh, that was so good. I was working on something myself on that. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> oh, that was good. I couldn't. I couldn't get it's not a kosher out. meal. It's prehistoric. That <laughs> That's a dinosaur stein. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think a stein is what you drink out of. Dinosaur is what you. Oh, he read yeah, that I, wrong. <laughs> We're going to just leave that one. Be. Well said, Kevin. Did I upset somebody? No, no, no not at all. It's no, no. no. Let's try again. What? What? It's our usual audience with their sense of humor that we won't necessarily, we could leave it be, or we could bring it on if you want. We can tell you. They, uh, they broadcast on a separate page and people can type in questions and comments and that's what they're reading off of. I know this, but I'm okay. wondering what it is that they're reading. Okay. All right. Social Assassin says, Skipper just posted Service Dino. And okay. Social Assassin, forgive me for this, says, I read that as Service Dildo. But then I would. <laughs> That's our audience, guys. <laughs> this is what we, <laughs> we play to that crowd. <laughs> Death drive. Death drive. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, time for me to be moving along. Right, uh, but listen, Heidi Ho to everybody, and thanks a lot for the support. We appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, best of luck thanks next week. Us. Hope it goes smooth and swimmingly, or at least with no scarring. No scars. Um, Elizabeth, we shall see you on Thursday with when we go to work with the blessed little angels. The lovely little children. And just so <laughs> you know, Queen's World Film Festival, what are the dates again? Why, yes, it's March 15th through the 25th. There we you go. See the moving image. And Kaufman Astoria Studios. Right here in Queens. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook and love us in real life. <laughs> How much does that cost? 